Good morning, Ed. How are you today? I'm good. I'm you look, good. How are you, you look, doing, Rich? I'm great. You look very dapper. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me today. I know you have a very busy schedule, and it seems like lately there's not enough hours in the day to get through all of the work that we're doing here. Yeah, that's so for I sure. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I'd like to discuss a topic with you today, and the topic is circular economy. Okay. So I'd like to start off my first question what is a circular economy, and how does that relate to the automotive recycling world? Well, that's a big question. It um, is. You know, circular economy is the effort to um, create products with a recycling or a reuse purposed in the engineering of it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard when manufacturers don't have that in the actual design. And then companies have to come around behind it at end of life of a, of a, a product, uh, say a computer as an example, mm -hmm. and figure out how to deconstruct and recycle the plastics and the circuit boards and recover the, the metals that are in that. Um, but there's more and more purposed uh, design these days than there were 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. But now, now, typically in the automotive recycling world, what parts are used in the circular economy? Well, you know, when you look at just the fact that uh, these vehicles um, have components that could be reused in collision repair, maybe uh, doors or glass or trim, um, bumpers, fenders, things like that, um, that would be the first place uh, that uh, you, I w would think of, it would come to my mind, that you right. would reuse those things. I remember uh, back in the day, uh, as a young man not having any money, visiting an auto salvage yard and <laughs> trying to find some trim components right. uh, for an old car that I had, uh, because uh, the, the new... The new auto parts stores didn't carry what I needed for an older car, so I had to go find one. And right. uh, it was it was interesting. I kind of enjoyed walking around those yards and with the tools and oh, yeah. pulling off the parts that I needed right. to, to to fix up you know, what broke on my car. But you know that's just uh, interesting side note. The uh, the the real recycling comes when you're looking at oh say engines, transmissions, and other components. Uh, like cores. Like, yeah, like a core for rebuildable. You have you have your alternators, your starters, your calipers, all of that. Um, transmissions, transmissions, probably. Well, yeah. they can be rebuilt. The engines can be, uh, uh, if they're still operating, they can be sold and, and reused as they are. They can be sent in for remanufacturing. Right. Or if they're, uh, they're truly wrecked and not usable, mm -hmm. then... Um, then metal recycling is the focus. You know, you're looking at, say, uh, aluminum transmissions or aluminum parts of engine blocks. Right. Um, they could be melted, sweated, and, and, the, and the aluminum recovered and cast into ingot and reused uh, in manufacture. I, one of the biggest things and the easiest, cleanest is uh, aluminum wheels. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's a plenty oh, of yeah. aluminum wheels out there. Yeah, there's a lot the of recycling world, wheels. for sure. Yeah, so that's a, that's a high-value high item that can be uh, easily uh, collected, transported, melted without much loss. Um, but those are the easy parts. You get, you get into the other, other things that get more difficult, say the car body itself, it's, yeah. it's steel. Right. They typically are shredded and uh, sent to a smelter for for a, a metal recovery for the iron. Well, you have other pieces and components of the vehicle that are higher value. Uh, you, you have copper wiring harness. There's a lot of wire in, in automobiles. Those are collected up and they're shredded, mm -hmm. chopped, and blown with air to separate the insulation from the copper. And then the copper is uh, recovered and resold um, for reuse in industry for remanufacturing of product. You that think about sense. the new cars that are out there on the road today. I saw a statistic that said about 25% of the metals that are 
used in the manufacturing of a new car come from automotive recycling. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah they that's, use that much, 25%. That's a big percentage. Wow. And, of course, you have your really high-value items, um, such as your catalytic converter system, your emissions control system that has the – the precious metals in it right and everybody knows that catalytic converters are very valuable these days because of the rare platinum group metals that are in there right and uh, of course those will be uh recovered today i remember 15 20 years ago there were some auto shredders that didn't bother taking the catalytic converters off of the car. Really? <laughs> they just let the converters wow. go right into the shredder with the. I can guarantee you that's not happening today. No, it's with, not happening with today. These prices that we these see These prices today, today it's, it's ridiculous. It is. Yeah. yeah. So, with the circular economy, how does that preserve the Earth's, uh, you know, natural resources? How does that look? Wow. Well, you know, you got a couple of different angles you can look at that. I mean, you can look at it strictly from the perspective of mine life. Um, you know, the thing about a mine is when you begin to dig the mine mm -hmm. and every day you're processing ore out of that mine, you're pushing it to its end of life. Right. It will end. Right. It, does it have a 20 year, 25 year, whatever that time frame is, that last shovel of ore, mm -hmm. it, it, it's depleted and you need to go find another natural right. resource or bring it online if right. it exists. Right. And that's, that's one thing to consider. We have a finite amount of um, these natural resources. The second thing is the energy uh, that goes into the mining. The I understand that the uh, amount of energy to produce um, uh, metals from a primary mining source is about 80% higher energy usage than simply just recycling from wow. end-of-life, say, an automobile. Right. So it's, and it, from it. an energy perspective, it's about 20% cheaper. Wow. Just from that. And so, then, then you have to look at, okay, so how's the energy produced, mm -hmm. right? Uh, does it have a carbon footprint? Is it putting off carbon? So yes, right. it does right. put off carbon. And um, you, you look at that and you say, "Wow, recycling is a huge benefit." Oh yeah, to the uh, to the environment. Yeah, yeah. Going and green, and the other right? thing is the emissions that we want to try to keep as much out of landfills as possible. Right. Because we are running out of landfill space within you know large large cities. Right. So it's very important to um, reuse, recycle. Yeah, repurpose. Repurpose, absolutely. Now, with that being said, are there other industries that benefit from these recycled automotive parts? Well, um, like, I, like I started with, you know, collision repair, mm -hmm. right? You can, you can buy you know, bumpers and fenders and, and those components Hoods, a doors. lot cheaper doors, yeah, yeah. than uh, a newly made product. So, um, the and the other thing is on some of these older vehicles, sometimes you can't get them new. Right. Especially the guys that are restoring old vintage vehicles. Right. You can't find them. Well, nowadays, the vintage vehicles are anything more than seven it. years old. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. And, and, and so... If you if you just look at it from the perspective of the metal side at the end of life recycling, um, what are all those aluminum ingots being used for? Yeah. They're they're recasting and manufacturing. Do they use them in jewelry? Oh they, no, they use it. They use it to make other transmissions and and other wheels, yeah. and other alloys. But the the precious metals. Well, the precious metals specifically. Absolutely, they you know the platinum, palladium, and rhodium. Uh, the platinum. Is primarily uh, has has a high usage in industry mm -hmm. uh, for um, uh, diesel uh, uh, catalytic converter or uh, diesel oxidation catalyst, but it's also um, in jewelry um, um, a high ticket item. It's uh, more valuable than gold in a manufactured form because of the cost of manufacturing. Gold is a lot easier to manufacture. Mm -hmm. Platinum is harder to manufacture in jewelry. Right. So um, there's, a, there's a high demand for platinum jewelry, especially in, in, the, uh, in Asia, um, not so much here in the United States. But um, palladium and rhodium, not so much in jewelry, um, primarily dental, uh, medical, 
devices mm -hmm. outside of um, the automotive uh, auto catalyst manufacturing. That's interesting. That is a lot of beneficial waste that these automotive, you know, recycling parts are being repurposed and put back into other industries. Right. And it, it really is important. Uh, if we're just talking about the catalytic converter, back to that again. If, you, if you're looking at those three items, the platinum, palladium, and rhodium, and you understand that about 70% of the PGMs are mined in one country, South Africa, right. and about 90% of the rhodium comes from South Africa. Absolutely. And uh, the, just the mere fact that there isn't enough of it um, and it's driving the price so high with yeah. with the demand, supply and demand, right? Typical because it does a, a really good job in converting, uh, you know, NOx nitrogen oxide. Right. I mean, it nitrous, has to be oxide. it has to be present mm -hmm. in the catalytic converter in order for that converter to do its job. Right, right. I mean, there's no if ands or buts. You right. cannot take right. that out. Right, and so you know we see legislation uh, tightening up on all of these air quality standards. And the only way to get there right. is with existing science. Mm -hmm. And these are the, the three elements that have proven to work. Right. And they're cost effective and they're robust and they stand up to the severe duty of the temperatures and right. so on and so forth. Right. So, so yeah, absolutely. Um, there's not a lot of demand for rhodium outside of auto catalyst. Interesting. Not a lot of demand. There's, now, th it's used, it's used uh, as a, in an alloy, perhaps, um, but uh, not much else. Not much else, huh? Yeah. And for those who don't know, what is the annual mine production of rhodium? What does that look like? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember offhand. I do know I saw a, 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 a diagram that um, the annual mine production of rhodium could fit, say, in the back of three pickup trucks. Wow. Now, compare that to platinum oh, or, wow. or gold or palladium. Right. It's a lot less than, obviously. Yeah, I, I read somewhere that if you had an Olympic-sized swimming pool and you filled it ankle-deep with platinum, that would represent about a year's uh, supply. Wow. Right. And I forget how many Olympic-sized pools full to the top would be gold. There's right. way more gold production. Absolutely. Yeah. And rhodium is about three pickup truck full. The bed's full of rhodium. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Annually. Yeah, annually. That's not much. Wow. Yeah. That really drives up the price. Uh, yeah, it sure has. Yeah, yeah. Now... What's your gut feeling? You know, obviously there's a lot of talk about going green and getting away from fossil fuels. Put your metallurgist cap on and let us know. I mean, where do you really see that going? I know you're a member of the IPMI and you're involved in a lot of these meetings and you hear it directly from the mines. Can you give us a little insight on what you're uh, learning on this topic? Well, I, I, I know that the, the world is, is pushing to go green and uh, go electric or go fuel cell, mm -hmm. hydrogen. Um, I've heard things where people are talking about, oh, maybe we can replace 100% of the, of the internal combustion engine fleet worldwide. Well, maybe 70%, well, maybe 50%. Well, I think the reality is we only have what we have Absolutely. as far as minerals and right. metals are concerned. Right. And there's not enough of the of the of the metals, the rare earth metals to produce the batteries that would be required for those types of projections. Um, and hydrogen requires a lot more platinum than a, a, a catalytic converter. And um, I think if we get to a 10% um, um, hydrogen powered fleet versus internal combustion, yeah, gasoline, we're probably gonna use 
all of the annual platinum mine production. Wow. Just to get to 10% of the fleet. Just 10%. Just 10%. Wow. Now, if we, if we get to 30%, we'd have to bring more mines on line. Yeah. And those, those properties exist, um, of course, they're in South Africa, Zimbabwe, Russia, mm -hmm. um, North America, we have some, um, uh, in Montana and in Canada. The only problem with that is it's so capital intensive, say $150, $200 million to bring a mine online. That's not cheap. And you've got about a seven-year window for the permit processing and the capital raise. Um, then you've got about another seven years to build it out, right. mine, mill, so now smelter. we're up to 14 years. So it's about 15 years yeah. to get a greenfield project off the ground. To, in 15 years, we're starting to produce metal. Wow. So that's kind of the cycle on a large project. And th these are large projects. Oh, yeah. And um, that's what's going to have to take. It's going to have to take that kind of effort. Um, and it's going to consume a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. It's going to produce a lot of carbon. It's just the way it is. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to go green, but you can't be green necessarily getting there right. with today's technology and today's way of uh, mining. And it just takes a different type of equipment, which isn't really, I mean, some of it's been developed, mm -hmm. um, but there's not a lot of it. And so it's still old school mining technology. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So to recap, why is it essential to have a circular economy with what we just discussed? What is that? What do you think that? Well, I I, I think you know if you look at the current production of new cars, um, the amount of auto catalyst that's being recycled is totally essential because something like 70% of those recovered metals from those catalytic converters, from all the salvage yards mm -hmm. and all the repair shops, right? Make up, 70% make up are reused in new car manufacturing. So only wow. about 30% is coming from a primary mine. Wow. That's how important that's really essential. Automotive then. recycling is to our new car manufacturing. Right. That's why you see um, the big players uh, in the industry uh, recycling the auto catalyst. And uh, they have a urban mine, right? Yeah. That they're drawing from that economy right. for recycling, and then they remanufacture into a new catalytic converter for a new car to be sold. Right. So super important. Very essential. We can't get away from it. We have to do no, it. No, we have to. Right. Especially if only 30% at the mines. Yeah. Where are we going to get these uh, precious metals? Right. We got to recycle them, reclaim them, put them back into use. That's right. That's right. There's not There's not enough precious metal sitting around in vaults. No. That they could buy and it's just not. Yeah. It's not there. It's not there. And the life cycle of a car is about 11 years. Yeah. And um, which is interesting because... I have a car that's 30 years old that I drive, and to think about it in those terms, it's... Right. Uh, boy, that car could have been recycled three times. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, but it's a good vehicle. It uh, still yeah. runs. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so you look at it from that perspective, um, you know, three cars could have been manufactured in the time... Right, that you've owned. That, I, that I've owned this. That, that, that vehicle's been that, on the road. So I had that Suburban, right? Right. So, you know... But we need that Suburban, eh? Come on. <laughs> We've done many trips in that Suburban. Yeah, yeah. That's a good vehicle. Yeah. Well, that's great. I really appreciate you taking the time and enlightening us on why it's so essential to have a circular economy that also includes automotive recycling. That's right. So thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate your Thanks, time. Thanks, Rich.